Hello and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be painting this monochrome spooky forest and graveyard scene. As it's that time of year I wanted to create something that was a bit seasonal and keeping in with that Halloween theme but I also wanted to use this video as an opportunity to show you some of the mistakes that I made when I first started painting and some of the do's and don'ts. So I'm starting with a 10 by 12 canvas pad today. These are inexpensive and they're really great for acrylic painting and offers a good opportunity to build a portfolio of your early work and see how your own style and technique develops as you progress. I'm using three colours today. Titanium white, which is a bright white with a heavy pigment, and it's the most opaque acrylic white. So it's good for blending into backgrounds to give a nice surface to paint over. I'm using Payne's grey which is a dark grey with blue tones. It's ideal for this painting. Rather than using black, when used as a mixer, Payne's Grey will help to achieve a nice cool shade to tone and shadow. And I'm using Ultramarine, which is a nice deep blue pigment. It's actually a warm blue with a more purple tone, and on the colour wheel it's closer to violet. And this will give us a nice rich pigment when mixing and blending with the other colours. And I'm using a variation of brushes today. Some are more professional artist brushes, but I also wanted to show you that you can achieve nice paintings using other cheaper tools that you may already have lying around. So, starting with the more professional brushes, I have these two fan brushes, one larger than the other. These are really good for creating textures, but not essential for this painting, as I will show you other techniques to achieve these effects using the other brushes. I have a small flat-headed brush, useful for creating straight lines and edges. I then have a round-headed rough bristled brush, Again, good for adding textures because the bristles are pointing out in all different directions. And a thin tipped round headed brush. The bristles are a lot softer on this one, allowing me to achieve fine lines and details. And I'm going to use a small DIY paint brush, just from a general store, to apply and spread the paint around the canvas to create our background. And an old makeup brush, again inexpensive and easy to obtain. The bristles are nice and soft and perfect for blending. So I'm going to start today by taking a good quality craft tape and just placing that around the edges and that's going to give a nice clean frame to our painting as well as protect the other pages in the pad from the paints bleeding into them. So I'm going to start off in our background by applying the paint straight from the bottle. I'm adding a large blob of titanium white in the centre and then getting the ultramarine and building that up in a circle around that and then taking the Payne's Grey and applying small dots to each corner of the canvas. Then I'm taking our DIY brush and starting with the lightest colour in the centre we're just going to start moving that around gradually building outwards so we've got a nice gradient between the white and the blue and gradually moving that circle out. Picking up the Payne's Grey. And just blending that together so that we have this cool grey on the outer edges slowly building into that blue and blending into the white in the centre. I'm then taking the makeup brush for blending and again starting in the centre and just really softly dusting that and again moving it around in bigger circles blending out all the edges. And then I'm wiping that with an old rag and going back to the centre and again blending out softly, softly. And obviously as we're going back to the centre we are picking up more of that blue but that's fine because as I said we want to really be blending that in so softly with just maybe a lighter patch right in the centre. Then I'm taking our DIY brush again and I'm picking up quite a bit of titanium white and that's straight out of the tube. 
And I'm just going to start to dab that on different thickness and layers. This is going to create some cloud shapes. I'm just doing this roughly because we want this to be a really sort of stormy, misty sky with lots of clouds. I'm then taking the ultramarine and I'm mixing that together with some of the Payne's Grey. And again, that's straight out of the tube. We haven't mixed any water with that because we don't want the colours to be running together because I'm just going to take that rough bristle brush and start to again dab it on there and apply some different tones different shades of that blue and that cool grey to create some shadows. If I were painting a clearer bluer sky with just one or two fluffy clouds I would be paying a little bit more attention to the details and shapes of the clouds but as this is a stormy sky with thick cloud coverage I'm just going back over with the titanium white because then I'm just going to blend that all across again very softly and then blending down and then again across giving us that thick cloud coverage and I'm letting that dry a little but not too much and you can see as the acrylic paints dry on the canvas they become darker than their application. So now I'm picking up titanium white on my fingertip with a bit of water mixed into that because I'm just going to create a little moon shape in the background and then again taking that rough headed brush and creating some clouds coming across the moon. So now I'm going to mix various shades of the colours. So I'm starting with the darkest shade here. I'm going to take a lot of Payne's Grey, mixing in some ultramarine with that, and then making a slightly lighter colour with more ultramarine and less Payne's Grey. And then I'm picking up the titanium white and making some softer, lighter shades of both of those colours that I've just mixed so that we have this pale grey and cooler blue-grey. So we're taking our flat-headed brush and without wetting that I'm just going to pick up some of the lighter colour that we've mixed with more ultramarine and I'm just going to start to create some trees here and I'm going to start in the sort of middle area here. And this is really what you don't want to do, I just want to show you. We don't want to be starting our trees in the middle of the painting. We want to be starting in the background so that you can build darker trees overlapping as they come into the foreground. We're not having enough water on there, I'm not able to get that tapered edge, but just look what happens if we do apply a bit of water to that brush. It makes it a lot easier to spread that paint across the canvas and give a nice tapered edge to our branches. So I'm just picking up that darker shade of Payne's Grey and Ultramarine because as we come into the foreground the trees are going to become darker as they move away from the distance and the light source. So here's another example of what we don't want to be doing when we're creating trees. I'm just going to start using the left hand side of the page as the don't side and the right hand side as the do. So left is wrong, right is right. So again I've not picked up enough water on that brush, meaning that the ends of those branches are not tapered and I'm having to go back over them. We also don't want to be giving our trees really dark flat edges around the roots and we don't want to be giving them a thin short trunk with two or three spindly branches poking out of the top. See that looks very unnatural, it kind of looks like a fork. 
Also what we don't want to be doing is getting a really thick trunk with really short fat branches. Obviously in nature there are many types of trees with different trunks and branch growth. But for this painting I want to be rendering taller, thinner trees as we're looking down this grove into the distance with its bare branches all intertwined. What we want to be doing is creating a nice V shape like this and just giving one or two, maybe three at the most, base branches to start adding on those finer branches. And rather than creating a flat bottom to our trees, we want to just be getting that thin tipped brush and again taking different shades mixed with water so that it looks like we've got roots and grass blending into the earth. Then I'm taking our lighter shades that we've mixed and I'm going to start creating some of the trees in the distance here. Now, as you can see, I'm having to now go back and try and work around these other branches in the foreground. Ideally, what I should have done is to start these smaller trees more in the distance first. So that rather than having to paint over the branches that I've just done that are more in the foreground, we would have been overlapping the darker colours. And it's fixable at this stage because obviously we can go back over those darker branches later, it just means a little bit more work and adding more detail in. And as we go further into the background, the trees become thinner. I'm picking up the lighter colours and more water so the colours become less saturated as they go into the distance. So now I'm picking up our rough bristle brush and I'm just picking up different variations of those shades that we created earlier. A little bit of water and I'm just going to start dabbing that in and spreading that around the bottom of our trees to create some foliage. Again using more water and a lighter shade as we're going back into the distance. And I'm leaving the centre sort of pathway of our grove clear because later we're going to then bring our mounds in there which is going to become our graves. darker tones and a thicker application as we come into the foreground. So I'm now picking up some ultramarine with quite a bit of water and mixing in some of that lighter shade that we created earlier because I just now want to go back into this background and create a few other trees coming in between. And again ideally I would have done this already so that I then don't have to manoeuvre in between these branches and trees that I've already created. Instead, we'd be overlapping.
taking my thin tip brush with a titanium white and just a little bit of water because I just want to go back around that edge of the moon and I'm going to blend that softly in. I'm just going back over it once more to give a nice bright application of that titanium white. But again, I'm starting on the outer edge of the moon and softly, softly blending into the centre. I'm now picking up some titanium white and mixing that with some of the darker shade on my palette with a fair amount of water to help it spread. And then taking that flat headed brush, I'm gliding along the surface and inner edge of our trees. As I'm going over the trunks and branches, I'm not applying too much paint to the brush or pressing too hard, allowing the brush to run out of paint so as I go over them, it gives this rough bark-like effect to their surface. And as I'm speeding up here, you can see how quickly and how much darker the titanium white dries than its application. Creating nice shadows and highlights. then taking my thin tip brush and adding some more details and shapes to some of the thinner twigs coming off these branches in the centre. We want these trees to look like they're bowing inwards and their branches are all intertwined overhead because this will frame the outer edges of the painting and draw the eye line to our focus point in the centre. So I'm now picking up my flat headed brush and that's damp and I'm just spreading the bristles out slightly. And then again, I'm taking different variations of these shades that we created earlier, mixed with some water. We just start dabbing on a rough layout for where our mounds are going to be here. Again, getting lighter and with more water as we're going back into the distance and getting a thicker application darker tones as we move into the foreground. And then adding a darker edge to the top and just blending the bottoms of those mounds back down so they look like they're rising out of the earth. Just creating some smaller mounds in the background here, again using the lighter shades that we mixed earlier, more water, getting a thinner application as we move into the distance. So now I'm taking the flat headed brush again and I'm using quite thick applications of the paints. I'm just going to start flicking up to create some grass like effect. The flat headed brush was dry, so we're not using any water and the paints aren't bleeding into each other. We're gradually building up layers of different colours. But as you can see, that's going on quite softly at the moment. We may need to wait for that to dry and start building up more additional layers. However, if I take my larger fan brush and a thicker application of paint, and then I just start on the edge of that craft tape and gently flick up there, you can see I'm starting to build up those layers and textures that look like grass quite easily, giving good depth and a nice shape from the bristles on that fan brush. And then I'm just taking that lighter shade of Payne's Grey and Ultramarine on the very edge of the fan brush and just dabbing along the top to give some more texture to these mounds, giving the impression there's grass and disturbed earth on top.
I'm going back in with a thin tip brush doing the same to these smaller graves in the background and adding a few more highlights and again blending down. And using the thin tip brush with quite a bit of water, I'm again taking our lighter shade of Payne's Grey and Ultramarine and starting to add our crucifix. and a thicker application as I move into the foreground. And try not to have your crucifix all facing one direction. You want them to be facing all different directions because obviously these graves are facing different directions anyway. So for this one, for example, if I do the nice horizontal line and then come across that middle section at a slight angle there. And it starts to give more perspective to the painting and get it looking a little less 2D. And then I'm just adding some very, very pale, faint graves in the background here and blending that through so that it looks like that we've got all these graves going right out into the distance. And then going back along the edges of the crucifix with a thicker application of Payne's Grey with just a little bit of water to help it spread and again giving them depth and adding some shadow. So I'm going to let that dry now and then I'm coming back in with a thin tip brush again giving a darker pigment and more details to these finer branches in the centre and then adding more highlights to the trunks and these bigger branches. I'm then taking a thin application of titanium white with quite a bit of water and just going over the front of these crucifix, giving them a bit more depth. And then once more I'm just coming back in, going over with a very fine, thick application of titanium white. And this is going to give us a more surrealist effect. If you want those crucifixes to look more naturalistic, you would apply the shadows more to the front and the highlights more to the back where they are facing our light source, which is the moon, and spend a little bit more time blending. By applying a thick application of titanium white to the fronts, that's going to really make them pop and stand out and look a little bit more spooky. And then I'm taking our smaller fan brush and again with a thick application of paint there, I'm just going to add some more grass-like effects in the front here. And then again picking up some titanium white with some water. I'm just going back over these mounds here to give that a little bit of texture. Because you want this earth to look like it's been disturbed, like it's been raked over a bit. Some of these mounds already have grass growing on them, some are more recent than others. We just want to be getting a good texture.
So I've let that dry again, and I'm taking the darkest colour on my palette, mixed with quite a bit of water, and using the flat-headed brush to again glide across the top, creating these bells and branches all glowing overhead. And then finally I'm taking the thin tip brush again and going back over those finer branches in the foreground with a thicker application of the darkest colour on my palette. And then adding the final highlights to the overhead branches using the same technique as we did earlier. So now we just need to remove the craft tape, revealing that nice clean edge around our painting. So that's not looking too bad. Obviously there are quite a few mistakes, but hopefully yours will look a lot better than this if you followed the techniques I've shown you today, as well as some of the beginner's do's and don'ts that I encountered. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe to my channel. Any feedback is welcome in the comments below, and please join me for my next video.